You have to hand it to Republicans. There are voter suppression bills in 47 states right now. Not just Florida, 46 other states, including, of course, GOP-controlled Texas, where protesters today took to the halls of the state capitol. With lawmakers there set to vote on some of those restrictive voting measures, the Texas House of Representatives is poised to pass a bill known as HB6. It would make it a felony to send unsolicited mail-in ballot applications, adds protections for partisan poll watchers, and forces voters who need help filling out a ballot to fill out a sworn statement as to why they need that help. The Texas House bill essentially gutted and rewrote a bill already passed by the state Senate, setting up a showdown on exactly which version might make it to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's desk. The Senate's bill limits polling places in large urban counties, restricts early voting, including banning drive through voting, and, lets, and it also lets poll watchers film voters if they think something is amiss. Yeah, don't see that could go wrong. Texas Republicans say the bills are about election security and preventing fraud, but even they themselves haven't been able to show evidence of any widespread fraud in their state. Texas's Republican Attorney General doubled his efforts at finding voter fraud last year, logging twice as many hours on such cases as he did in 2018. And how many instances of fraud did he find? Drum roll, 16. Not 16,000, not 1,600. 16 total. By the way, as the Houston Chronicle reports, that's half as many cases as there were in 2018. Still, according to the Brennan Center, Texas leads the nation in introducing restrictive voting bills, 49 in all. 49. Civil rights groups and Democrats say these bills are pure and simple voter suppression. This legislation hurts voters of color, hurts voters, uh, young voters, um, hurts voters with disabilities. Texas already has some of the most restrictive voting laws in the country. And now they're trying to criminalize more parts of voting. They're trying to make it harder for the average Texan to go vote. This is not about liberal and conservative anymore. It's about a fundamental issue of fairness of somebody's right to go vote. And it's not just lawmakers and activists speaking out. More than 180 local businesses and local leaders have voiced their opposition to the bills, as have 50 corporations, including Hewlett Packard, Patagonia and American Airlines. Joining me now is native Texan, former San Antonio mayor and former HUD secretary, Julian Castro. Thank you so much for coming back on the show tonight. We just heard your twin brother say this fight is about fundamental rights. And in a statement today, you say Texas Republican lawmakers can see the writing on the wall. They know they're losing their grip on power in our state and have decided to take it out on everyday Texans. Why do you think this is the route Texas Republicans are taking? Suppressing voters of color rather than try and grow support with them. Because we saw in November 2020, Donald Trump didn't do too badly with Latino voters in the Rio Grande. Uh, I mean, that's a great point, uh, Mehdi. You know, there was an uh, op-ed that was written by a Republican state representative from the San Antonio area today that said the folks that are going to get hurt the most, perhaps, may in the long run be Republican. Republicans right now are doing all of this based on the big lie that, that Trump put forward, that there was somehow massive voter fraud. The truth is they've been at it for years. And as you noted, they're at it across uh, more than 45 states in our country because they believe, they see the writing on the wall, they believe that demographics are going to be their undoing. Uh, but in the process, they're not only hurting Democrats. I, you know, I agree with Joaquin's comment that they're hurting everybody. Uh, during the 2020 election, I think it was late October, I visited uh, this 24-hour voting uh, location in the Texas Medical Center in Houston. And we went at like 12.30 at night. And what we saw there were shift workers in the medical community who, for whom that time was the most convenient for them to vote. I'm sure some of them were Democrat, some of them were Republican, but they were shift workers who wanted to go exercise yes. their right to vote. It was the best way. These Republicans, in their attempt to hold on to power and to oppress black and brown voters, are going to end up hurting a lot more than that. Yeah, they are. And we're just, we were just seeing pictures as you were speaking there from the Texas House floor. Uh, where the debate is ongoing this evening on that bill. Many of the provisions of these bills, the House bill and the Senate bill, but especially the Senate bill, seem to target the steps that places like Harris County in Texas took to make voting easier during the pandemic. As you mentioned just now, the 24-hour voting in Houston. Uh, the 
this bill is going to ban drive-through voting. Uh, Harris County had 24-hour voting, as you mentioned, had drive-through voting. And these are areas, of course, Harris County, with a big population of black and Latino voters, people who voted for Joe Biden overwhelmingly. Does that, in your view, make these bills racist in their intent and effect, if not in their wording? Well, of course they are. Uh, it's very clear Texas has a long history of these Republicans in Texas have a long history of embracing uh, racist legislation, uh, whether it's voter suppression, it's gerrymandering, any number of things. They've been found by court after court over the years to have that racist intent. And that's what's going on here. Uh, and, you know, the, the issue for Texas is uh, that we have a state that now is, uh, you know, more than 50 percent people of color. Uh, in 2021, Hispanics in Texas were uh, projected to actually become the plurality. So we have a situation where the majority of Texans, their votes are being suppressed. These Republicans are making it harder for them when they make up the majority of the state. Uh, it is absolutely yeah. ridiculous what these folks are attempting here. We still have an opportunity to stop this. Uh, they're they're debating it right now, but even if it passes tonight, they got to go to a conference committee. And my hope is, is that in addition to all the companies that have stepped forward, that everyday Texans will continue to make their voices heard so that we can try and stop it or at least so, take the worst part of it and, and, and stop those. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Republican, appeared on Fox News this morning. He argued that Texas makes it easy to vote and railed against the corporations who've taken a stance against these voting bills. Have a listen. Since we passed voter ID, everyone said, oh, this is going to suppress vote. Um, we've increased voting in presidential elections in Texas by over 40 percent and in gubernatorial elections by 76 percent. Right. These CEOs of these national companies are the woke culture. They know nothing about what Texans think about this. We make it easy to vote in Texas. The numbers prove it. Uh, what's your response to the Republican lieutenant governor of your state? Uh, he's wrong. Actually, Texas ranks uh, 43rd in terms of voter turnout and 47th in terms of voter registration. And it's it's habitually at near the bottom of the barrel when it comes to both registration and turnout. That was the case 20 years ago, 10 years ago. It's the case today. And if this legislation passes, uh, I believe that we're going to stay at the bottom. And that's what they want. Uh, they think this is their only way for to hold on to power. So it's not surprising that uh, Lieutenant Governor Patrick is uh, not telling the truth. Uh, Y'all may, you may remember as well, Mehdi, that not too long ago, he put out a million dollar offer for anyone who could bring yes. forward a voter fraud. Uh, you know, still, yeah, you know, nothing. That million dollars is pretty, that million dollars is pretty safe. <laughs> yes. uh, he, he belongs um, to Let me ask you this. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem with the modern Republican Party. You feel like they belong in entertainment, but they also do pretty dangerous things in a kind of semi-entertaining way. Uh, let me ask you this. Right now, the only way your party, the Democrats, can stop this racist, anti-democratic stuff at a state level is via federal legislation, the For the People Act, uh, HR1 or S1, as it's being called in the Senate right now by Chuck Schumer. And yet you have two Senate Democrats, Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema, holding it up defending the filibuster. Why has your party and your party leadership been so soft on them, given what's at stake here, given they are the literal block on legislation that could save democracy, save free and fair elections in this country? Pretty high stakes. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema recognize the existential nature of uh, this problem, that if we're not able to pass this new voting rights legislation. And by the way, I testified a couple of weeks ago before the House Judiciary Committee on the need for new voting rights legislation. But if we don't do this, then these Republicans are going to pass hundreds of pieces of legislation to suppress the vote. And they'll get, at least in the short term, what they're looking for, which is uh, a strong majority uh, in state legislatures, a majority in the Senate, a majority in the House of Representatives. So. This is something that these two senators should really ponder. And my hope is that voices from throughout the party 
will speak up and will put pressure on them to change their mind. It wouldn't be the first time that people in office change their mind, and this would be for good reason if they do. Yeah. I mean, the problem is, I mean, Joe Manchin, West Virginia, whatever, cinema is in Arizona, where they're not just trying to pass voter suppression laws, it's in her state that they're having this ridiculous, bogus, quote unquote, recount, talking about bamboo in the ballot paper, ballots being stuffed from Asia, et cetera, et cetera. She can see what's going on in front of her own eyes, in front of her nose, and yet absolutely stubbornly sticking to this. It's all, it's all like she doesn't know the arguments and doesn't know what's going on. Well, look, I mean, she's from Arizona. Obviously, she knows the state very well, but at least my sense is that there's a miscalculation here. What's happening with her position is I think she's deflating uh, much of the enthusiasm, especially in uh, the Latino community that helped propel her uh, to victory and that she's going to need in the years yes. to come. Uh, and that's the danger here is that in trying to hew to the middle so much, uh, you're not only endangering in the long term democratic viability and competitiveness in these, these elections and the voices of black and brown people, but in the short term for this next election, yeah. you're deflating a lot of that enthusiasm. And she may well end up feeling that in Arizona. Problem is the six-year Senate term. She doesn't have to worry about election for another three, four years. One last question before I let you go on a different topic. The Texas Senate just passed a bill allowing people to carry handguns without a license. That would eliminate the training that's currently required to carry. And most people in Texas oppose it, according to the polls. Why are Texas Republicans trying to push this through as well? And is there anything Democrats can do to stop this bill? Yeah, the Republicans in Texas, like the Republicans in a lot of places, are beholden to the gun lobby. Uh, they have been for a long time. Uh, this so-called constitutional carry, it's really permitless carry, is reckless. It's opposed by people on different sides of the aisle, police chiefs, uh, you know, any number of, of uh, community members, nonprofits throughout the state, because people recognize that it's going to create more dangerous, a uh, more dangerous environment and more dangerous streets out there when you don't even require uh, any kind of training or permitting or who can carry. Uh, it's a recipe for even more of the kinds of shootings that we've seen yeah. in Texas and throughout the country. That's what they're creating here. It's a real mistake. And fortunately, the voters of Texas get that. And I hope they make them pay in 2022 for it. Yeah, who knows how many lives will be lost between now and then, though. It's absolute insanity. Secretary Julian Castro, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the show tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen. And make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.